Hey guys and welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video. Today is going to be a more of a like sit down video and I wanted to share five things that I do and I implement into our day and our life to kind of simplify motherhood and just to make motherhood a little bit more easy and feel like I have a bit more of a balance between kind of every part of my life. So obviously motherhood can become overwhelming really, really fast if we are not careful. Um, obviously I only have one little girl, she is one year old, so I don't even have to deal with multiple kids and I know how overwhelming that can get. I know how tiring motherhood can be, especially if your child isn't a great sleeper. There's just so many things that go into being a parent and I have really tried this last year to implement some new things and to try out and experiment with different things to see ways that I can really simplify my role as a mother, also just to make being a parent and everything in general just be a little bit easier and to not get so caught up in the overwhelm and the stress and the pressure of it all. So. Hopefully you find this video helpful. If you do and you enjoy me sharing motherhood content and kind of sit down videos like this, I would really appreciate it if you would give this video a thumbs up. It really helps this apartment channel. Thank you guys for being here and let's jump right into it. I've taken a couple notes on my phone, so I'll be looking at that periodically just so that I kind of stay on topic with what I wanted to get across today. So the first thing that I do and that this is kind of something I've tried to do from day one with Sammy, but now that she's a little bit older, I've really been getting it into our routine and that is getting outside. Being inside all day can make the day seem to drag on and I find that it just feels like one mess after another mess after another mess is happening. I can't stay on top of it. I get bored, then Sammy gets bored and it just, it leads to stress, fatigue and just ultimately not feeling like my best version of myself. And I can tell even if Sammy, if we've been in the house all day and it's just kind of been like a blah day, I can tell too that she's bored and then she's a lot more fussy and cranky and things like that. So one of the things that we've started doing is getting outside first thing in the morning. Whether we're eating breakfast outside, we go out before breakfast and water the plants or we go out after breakfast. I will sometimes bring a toy out for her or I'll set her up with some sensory play or I'll just let her roam around on the grass, but I would highly recommend doing this because it's been a game changer for our routine. Not only does it help to balance my mood and kind of help me have a good start to the day getting that vitamin D, really like helping myself wake up, whether it's been a rough night or a good night, Sammy is also so much happier when we do this first thing in the morning. So I would highly suggest setting your baby up outside somewhere where you know it's safe for them to explore because they love to explore. So just set them up in an area where you know like they can explore in the grass and they can go play in the dirt like I just let her do whatever I don't mind if she gets messy or anything like that it's just her time to explore and simply be a baby because that's what they want to do is just explore the world around them and it's really nice because now that it's become part of our routine Sammy doesn't always need me right beside her I'll she'll either be very invested in the sensory play that she's doing or the toy or she's just busy you know, crawling along the furniture we have outside or playing in the grass, inspecting a flower that she found. And it gives me a chance to just kind of have some alone time in that moment. So I'll sit out there and I'll be, you know, watching her and stuff, but sometimes it allows me to just have a moment to myself. So I'll bring a book outside or I'll just sit on my phone for a couple of minutes. And it's really nice because I know that it's not taking away from time with her. It's simply allowing her some time and me some time and it just starts the morning on a really good note. So that is something that we have started doing and I will probably continue to do every single day. It's obviously a lot easier in the summer so we'll have to get creative in the winter. But for right now, I would highly recommend implementing some outdoor time into your morning routine. So kind of going along with that a little bit, the second thing that we've done is I really try to encourage independent play. If your child becomes so dependent on you or on a TV or on a battery operated toy or just on something external to entertain them, it's going to be really hard for you to ever have like a break during the day. So something that I do, and I've been doing this again since Samuel was really young, but it's also never too late to start. I really think that kids can adapt and change and they're flexible if you really stick with a new routine. But if your baby is young, you can start this from a young age. And that is just encourage 
and promote independent play. So what that looks like is I know that Samantha's room is 100% okay for her to get into anything. Um, there's nothing that she could find that could potentially be unsafe or harmful for her to get into So it's an area that if she's in there I can step out of the room and know she's gonna be okay Our house is also very small. So when I'm in the bathroom getting ready I'm literally in the room right next to her so I can just peep out the door and make sure she's doing okay But that's something that we try I try and do multiple times throughout the day So for example one thing that's a big part of our routine is first thing in the morning after she's been nursed and we've played outside for a little bit and like she's pretty happy and content and all her needs have been met. She's not feeling like cranky or fussy or whatever. I will place her in her room and I'll pull out some of her toys. I'll ask her what she wants to play with. I'll get her interested in something and then I'll tell her, okay, Samantha, mommy's gonna go do her makeup for about 10 minutes and then I'll come back. So you stay here and play. I know people might be like, they don't understand, but I really think babies understand more than we give them credit for. So by saying that, I feel like she can start to understand that I'm just going to step out for a minute, you stay here and play. I will then go in the bathroom and do my makeup or my hair or I'll get dressed or I'll lay the bed. Whatever it is I really want to do kind of alone without like holding her or without her like trying to be picked up and things like that. And again, even if it's only 5 to 15 minutes, it's something and it's really healthy for her to be able to just play using her own imagination and it's so cute sometimes i'll peek in when i'm finished getting ready and she still is playing contently so then i'll just leave her and let her play and it's really great to watch her explore come up with like little things that she plays with um and sometimes she will not even touch her toys and she'll just play by the mirror or she'll find like a crumb on the carpet and she'll just sit there playing with it for like a solid five minutes so encouraging independent play is really great i also think it's really healthy for kids again to not be dependent on something external to entertain them all the time but to also understand that sometimes we're just going to learn to play with whatever is around us and to use our imagination and our creative side you guys know by now that i'm really big into decluttering and to living with less i'm still so far from where i want to be but I'm constantly trying to go through things and declutter the excess and I really got into this when Sammy started getting into things. So kind of when she started crawling and she could actually move from the spot I had placed her and then get into stuff. You do not want to have loose papers, loose bills, important mail, you don't want to have a bunch of cords or like books that they can rip the pages or even like decor that can break. You don't want any glass things. You're not gonna just want a ton of stuff around the house. Kids and babies, they make a mess with whatever is around them. So I find that by decluttering my home, her small messes that she makes trigger me way less because I get very triggered by mess. It's, it's like, it just makes me so stressed, so overwhelmed, I, I just can't not live in clutter. Um, it really, really affects my mental state. So knowing that it's up to me as the parent to change my surroundings and so that I'm not getting upset at her every time there's a mess because that is what she's going to do. She's going to create mess and I want her to feel like she can play and get the living room you know, messy and scatter her toys everywhere um, if that's what she feels like doing. And then of course we clean up at the end of the day. But I've really limited a lot of the furniture, decor and things like that that we have. Um, so there's not like a ton of stuff in our house. So then her messes aren't just like on top of that. So try and declutter and um, get rid of a lot of the excess. And then even in like her room, like I said earlier, everything in her room is baby proof. So that can be really nice too because you have areas where you know if you're in there, I know that there's nothing in there that I would be really upset if you got into. Whereas like if I put her in like our guest room, I keep a lot of my receipts and things like that from work in there. So I need to remember to put that box up high. So I just don't leave her in there alone unless I'm with her. So things like that, you can try and play around with your organizing in your house, but ultimately just trying to live with less and having a more minimalistic home has really helped me, especially if you're someone who does get triggered by a lot of clutter. So then the fourth thing is to get out of the house at least every single day. Even if it's just for a quick walk to the park or you spend an hour outside, um, it's, I think it's so healthy to get out of the house. So this really helps me when we first had Sammy, we only have one car. So we, 
it makes it really confusing because if I want the car, I have to drive Rodolfo to work. That was really, really inconvenient when Sammy was a newborn. I didn't feel like waking her up, putting her in the car seat, driving Rodolfo, coming home. Like it was just awful. So now that she's a little older, we do it more often because I really like having the car and I would say I have the car like 95% of the time. But even on the days when I don't have a car or if you don't have a car accessible or you don't even wanna go anywhere super far, just a walk to the park, a walk down the road. I'll try and get out at least once a day. It breaks up the day so that there's no moments where I'm just like, again, if I'm feeling bored and Sammy's feeling bored, it just doesn't lead to anything good. It just leads to overwhelm and fatigue and exhaustion, which ultimately makes me feel like I'm not, I'm just not um, showing up in the way I want to as a mother and also as a wife, because then I'm really tired and cranky when Rodolfo comes home and I tend to take it out on him. So try and get outside, just break up your day, go for a walk with a friend. Um, if you can't get outside, like you really, really can't, try phoning up a friend, having something scheduled in your day to break it up. Be like, look, I need to, us to like, I don't know, get a bunch of your friends on a Zoom call for an hour in the afternoon, just something to break up your day. One thing I found really hard when we first had Sammy was how repetitive the days felt. It just felt like I was living my life on repeat and yeah. It, it was killing me so I was like I feel like I'm just like this and everything is on constant repeat so you gotta switch up your days because yes a lot of your day is the same with naps and bedtime and wake up times and what you do you know you play with your baby you read to them you give them a snack give them lunch it's like you have gotta mix it up go to the park go to a water park go to a friend's house just do something new okay and then the fifth and final thing that I have done to really help simplify and kind of make motherhood a lot more easy for me is to include your baby and I include Sammy in your daily tasks and chores and just household things that you do throughout the day. Do not feel like you have to wait until nap time to do the laundry, wash the dishes, pick up the toys and all of that stuff. I remember I had that mentality when Sammy was a newborn because that's what everyone says. They're like, you know, nap time is kind of when it's time to get stuff done. Um, I don't really like doing that. I really enjoy using nap time for this. I'm filming a video while Sammy's napping, or I like to watch a YouTube video, or I like to just lay down. Sometimes I'll take a nap. I really like to relax, rest, and just do something that brings me joy during her nap time. So maybe I have photos to edit or things like that. If I have to spend her entire nap time cleaning, I feel burnt out. I feel like I never had some time for myself, unless I'm in a really like cleaning mood, then that's a different story. But daily, if I just feel like, oh, it's nap time now, I have to go deal with the kitchen. It just becomes like you're just dragging yourself around all day. It just doesn't lead to anything good. So I now include Samantha in my daily tasks. I know it might seem weird, especially when they're little and they can't really help, but I will tell her, okay, Sammy, let's go do the laundry. And I will plop her down and she'll hand me like one item or she'll even start pulling them out of the washing machine. But she's doing it with me, she's involved. And ultimately continuing to do this as she gets older, I'll actually be able to have her help me. You know, she can put the clothes in the washer, she can push the buttons to turn it on, little things like that. You can very quickly turn daily tasks and chores into very exciting things for kids because it's something new and often they're told no 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 you don't we don't do that don't do that don't touch that instead teach them what we do how we do it properly and safely and things like that so obviously there are certain things I won't do with Samantha around like I don't try and clean the bathrooms but I will vacuum with her around she loves the vacuum cleaner and so she'll just crawl around while I vacuum um, Again, the dishes is a little bit of a harder one. When she's a little older, I can have her stand up to it and kind of help me wash the dishes. But right now I would say like things like laundry or sweeping or vacuuming or even dusting, picking up toys, I always have her help me do that. Again, they're not actually like necessarily helping me, but it's allowing her to gain confidence in that, hey, look at you're doing this. And that's something I want to continue to do as she gets older. So don't be afraid to do those things while your babies are awake and then really allow that nap time to be your time. So what, in, what on this particular day do you want to do or get done? Do you need to take a nap? Do you wanna go have a shower and kind of do your hair and make up a little fancier because you have some time? Um, those things have really made a world of a difference for me because I finally feel like I have space and time for myself and that is so healthy it's not selfish it doesn't mean you don't love your babies needing space and time for yourself is normal it's healthy and I would say 
I would encourage you to prioritize that every single day because at the end of the day, you will probably be a better, happier mom, wife, everything, friend. We just function better when we can take care of ourselves and they always say you cannot pour from an empty cup. So we need to fill our cup first and then we can pour that over into our families and our homes and our friendships and our communities. Anyway, those are my five tips and things that have really helped change my mindset around motherhood and have really just helped my days flow a lot simpler and easier and really removed a lot of the pressure um, and frustration even from motherhood for me. So give some of them a try for yourself. Obviously every family, home, parent, child is gonna be different and you might have to alter things according to your guys' needs. But I just hope that this was helpful and encouraging for you to know that you can do it and we're all just trying our best and hopefully we can continue to learn from one another. So leave your tips down below, things that you do that you've noticed have really helped you in motherhood. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Thank you.